Today, I want to show you how to use power tools to create some really cute and affordable decor DIYs. Are you ready to create something fun? Then let's get started. On this channel, I love to share easy DIYs and budget home decor. And if we haven't met yet, my name is Lisa and this is Our Gray House. I want to kick this off with a DIY that is so easy, you're going to be wondering why you haven't made it already. Take a one by two and cut four pieces, four inches long. Don't forget when measuring, either include the width of the blade when measuring, which will require math calculations, or do like I do and just kind of measure it before you make each cut. Now I'm using Waverly Wax in the color antique to stain my wood pieces. And I normally paint it on and wipe it off with a scrap piece of cloth that's damp, but instead today I'm just, I've got that damp scrap piece of cloth and I'm just applying it that way. It works just as well either way, but just make sure you wipe off the excess. Then I used my Cricut to cut out a decal that says, you are my sunshine. I'm applying it with my paper transfer tape that I love, but you could totally write this by hand if you wanted to. I'm using Waverly chalk paint in the color maze to create the sun in the corner. And I'm just making little rays outside. And then I'm gonna use that, this little tool. I don't know what that tool is called that you see right there, but I'm gonna make like little dots all around just cause I think that looks fun. And I'll show you how it turns out at the end. This video is part of the Power Up playlist and the purpose of this is to show you that you can use power tools and make cool stuff. The host is Sarah from Can Sarah DIY It and the guest host is Tiffany from Broke Girl Aesthetic. Playlist and channel links are all down below so go and check it out after you're done watching my video. I've got this little corner in my kitchen that needed just a little bit of extra oomph in it. So I've got a tear tray that I decorate for the season and holidays, but I still felt like it needed something extra. So I decided to create a little mini tea towel ladder and it is so easy to make y'all. I'm using a one by two that is eight foot long and these are fairly inexpensive. I think mine cost me around eight bucks. I'm cutting two pieces at 18 inches long for the two sides and three pieces at seven inches long for the rungs. Woodworkers will tell you that the golden rule is to measure twice and cut once. And you'll know that I measure with my heart, but when it comes to projects like this, I do need to be a little bit more accurate. So for the first cuts, I measure out on one end, 18 inches. I make a mark and then I use a combination square to mark the line that I will need to cut. And normally you would think, or well, at least I would, that you just go ahead and mark off all the lines to cut. But, and this is a big butt. <laughs> I like big butts and I cannot lie. Okay, seriously though. When you are making the measurements, if you're trying to be more precise and accurate, you need to include the width of the blade of the saw that you're using. And since that is way too much math for me, what you can do is measure from the other end, make the mark, mark the line that you have, and then you have two cuts that you can make at the same time. So you're just kind of cutting from both ends. I bought my wood at Lowe's and I had them cut it in half so I could fit it in my car. And here I am making the first cuts and y'all, you won't be able to see this or really notice it, but my cuts aren't straight. And even though I made a line and everything, so be patient with yourself, take your time. It all turns out fine in the end and that's what matters, right? So I'm cutting at the two sides of this piece of wood and it's 48 inches long. And I had Lowe's cut the eight foot piece in half. So I cut two 18 inch pieces and I should have a 12 piece, you know, 12 inch piece left over at the end. But remember, I told y'all to keep in mind the width of the saw. Well, let me show you. I wanted to show y'all that this is not quite 12 inches. It's super close, but it's not 12 inches. And you know, close isn't, close only counts in like horseshoes. <laughs> so this is, you know, if you're trying to be exact, you have to keep in mind the width of your blade when making your measurements. And I did want to mention, this is really not the saw to be doing this part with. You need one of those, I think it's a circular saw, but this is what I got y'all and this is what we're working with. So keep that in mind. Just because you don't have the exact correct tool doesn't mean you still can't try and create something super cute. So don't let that, not, don't let that hold you back is what I'm trying to say. So I'm trying to figure out how to do a 15 degree cut so that it has a bit of an angle and the towel ladder can, I mean, you don't have to do this, but it makes it look a little bit more finished out if you have that cut edge on the, on the bottom of your blanket ladder thing. We don't have a saw that does a 15 degree, or, yeah, 15 degree cut. So um, Marvin has done some science and he's gonna explain kind of how this works. So I'm gonna do a 45 and divide it into three. So whatever that length is there, 
you divide it into three because three times 15 is 45 and that's what you have. So if you divide that length there into three. So how many? It's almost an inch and a half. And if you divide the inch and a half by three. Yeah. Okay. On the web. So Marvin's way of figuring out what one and a half divided by three is, is to ask Siri. That's pretty smart, honey. So what's the uh, answer? Okay, me popping in here. So as it turns out, we really didn't need to ask Siri because there's a very, very obvious answer to this question. And I can't believe it took us this long to come to the conclusion. Oh, that's me to have calculated but I we are just like really, really overthinking this, y'all. And when you find out the answer in just a few seconds, you're going to be like, gosh, what took them so long? Duh. It's three half inches. One and a half divided by three, so it's... Okay, so explain the process again to find the 15, 15 degree angle. Yes, we have the fireplace on. It's April in Texas, but it's crazy weather right now. So. so, we don't have a way to do a 15 degree angle. So what I did was use a 45, then if you divide it by 15, you get three. So you divide that 45 into three. Equal parts? Yeah. And that last equal part is what you'll is your 45 degree cut, uh, is your 15 degree 15 cut. 15 degree cut. Yeah. Okay. So you'll go from there to the corner. And there's your cut. That's 15 degrees. Okay. And then I could use this as kind of a, um, what do you call it? Like template. A, Template for the right, other side. Yeah. Okay, cool. You can put them together and cut them, whichever. They're not even square anyway. What did you just say? <clears throat> I said that way they'll be equal. No, you said it wasn't even They're square. They're not even square anyway. Well, look. I mean, I'm still learning. Marvin calls me out for them not being square. Okay, so what he has done and um, he does a, a great job of like, explaining to me why we're doing it. He marked, like he measured and was all exact in math and science and stuff. And anyway, he made a little mark, a uh, cross point where I should drill. And then he took the finishing nail that I'm going to be using and he made, he went like that and then added, you know, just hammered it a little bit so that it makes like a, a point where the drill bit thing can sink into and like be where it needs to be. So now I'm going to drill all the way through this. And then when I put it together, then I'll have the hole started and then I can just hammer all the way through the run. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. This is obviously not my workbench area, but um, I wanted to do it tonight <laughs> before it got too late or too much later because it's already like, it's already 1130. Anyways. And to be honest, y'all, I don't know if me drilling the holes does anything because I don't even hammer the nails in straight when I go to nail the hammers in. Uh, nail the hammers. Hammer the nails in. <laughs> anyway. I'm staining this with Waverly Wax in the color antique, just like I did the book stack that you can see at the top of the frame. But I am painting some of this on because I need to get into the cracks and crevices of the ladder that the rag is not really getting to. And I'm just being sure to wipe off the excess as much as possible. Now with this piece, the ladder, and with the book stack, you actually can make those with a miter saw. And it's it's not hard to do it at all. And you don't have to have power tools. But I did want to show you that if you do have power tools, even if they're not the correct ones, because like I said, mine aren't, that's not really the saw that you would use for that. That jigsaw, you'd more likely use a circular saw or something. I don't have one. So I'm just using what I have and making it work. And I want to encourage you, if you don't have everything that you feel like you need to start, Go ahead and start though. Like you're, it, 
just figure it out and try to try to you know get to the end product whichever way you can and you know maybe one day i'll have a nail gun maybe one day i'll have a circular saw maybe one day i'll have an area that's like really you know good for doing woodworking but right now i don't so i'm making do and i'm getting it done and so just just be encouraged you know try and try try again okay y'all see how it turned out and my, what the top rung is not even like level but you can't tell because i have the towels on there you, you're not even going to notice that and you can switch out the towels for just all kinds of seasonal decor items to you know customize it to your home this is how these two super beginner friendly wood diy projects turned out I love them. I think they turned out great and I can't wait to display them in my home. And if you tried these, let me know. I would love to see how yours turned out. And don't forget, I post tips, tricks, and tutorials every single week. I'd love it if you would subscribe and leave me a comment. Let me know which one was your favorite out of today's projects. And if you want to follow me on social media, like here on YouTube or over on Instagram or TikTok, my handle is Our Gray House, but just don't follow me in real life though because that's creepy. Bye.